All right, Rowdy Yates, High Plains Biochar. I want to show you guys how we make biochar with the Boulder Biochar Barrel. We're out here in our kind of our grow room where we have a lot of our uh, seeds starting right now. We've got a bunch of tomatoes and different things that are going to be going. And last night it was two degrees here in Laramie, so we had to keep this uh, room warm, but we need to get a little bit more heat in here. So we're going to go ahead and start this guy up uh, real quick. But first, I just want to show you guys. So these are the kegs. This is how we make the biochar. Um, so I, I can, you can see I've got these mostly filled up with wood chips right now. I'm going to go ahead and just top them off real quick quick just so, so that we get them nice and full that's the one really nice thing about this is being able to process wood chips because they're readily available and you can't normally run those in a wood stove so this is uh, gives you a lot of flexibility being able to run these so now that we've got our wood chips loaded in our kegs we're going to go ahead and put in our seals which is these guys right here so next step is we're going to go ahead and drop these into place. Okay, next step is we've got to go ahead and put our pins in. So we're going to pin our kegs sh shut. So then what we do is we go ahead and we put a little clip in here just to uh, keep that from falling out during the, during the burn. All right, so now that we've got our kegs loaded up, now we're ready to go. So now we're over here, this is the Boulder Biochar Barrel. Uh, all stainless steel construction. It's got a really nice temperature gauge so you can monitor your temperatures and adjust your air. We've got four different air inlets for you to adjust so you can maintain the proper temperature in the burn chamber. Um, and as you can see in here, we've got some wood loaded on either side and below the rack that holds these kegs. So now we're going to go ahead and load these kegs uh, into the Boulder Biochar Barrel. Uh, one goes in, this one goes in back and roll it to the side. Number two. Roll it to the side. Okay, so now we've got our kegs installed there. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and add a little bit of paper and some additional wood here. Um, I like to put a little bit of wood kind of right between the barrels. This is just old sawmill waste that we have around readily available. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and add a little bit of paper here. But, uh, I usually also go ahead and scoot the kegs forward just a little bit, just to give a little bit of airspace on the back side. And make sure that that bottom gets co completely. So, yeah, I like to go ahead and add some paper. And go ahead and add a little bit more wood. All right. So now the next step in the process is we're going to go ahead and light the fire. Okay, so we've got our fire just lit now, so we're going to go ahead and open up our air vents to allow a little bit more air in and uh, get this thing going. But now it'll take probably, you know, 10 or 15 minutes for the fire to kind of get good and going. We'll check back in with you guys here in just a second. All right, guys, now that we got the fire just getting started here, we're going ahead and we're opening our four air vents so that we can get the most air in. And you can kind of see the fire's getting going in there. It'll probably take about 10 or 15 minutes before this thing's really up and going, but we're already up to over 300 degrees in the burn chamber, so it won't take long. All right, guys, it's been about 10 minutes now. It looks like we're a little over 700 degrees in the burn chamber here, checking our temperature. And as you can see in there, the fire's going really good. We're gonna go ahead and keep let that keep going. I usually like to run somewhere around 750 degrees or so. So it's almost up to 10. All right, guys, we've been running for about 20 or 30 minutes now. We're up to, looks like about 800 degrees on our temperature gauge here. Uh, so we're definitely uh, in the pyrolysis part of the process here. So I'm gonna open this up and kind of let you guys see what it looks like. So there it is, you can actually see the gas coming out a couple of those vents in there. Um, and everything's really nice and hot under those kegs. So we, it won't be long before these are ready to go. All right, guys, it's been about 45 minutes now since we started. Most of the fire has burned out, but you can actually look in here right now and you can still see the wood gas coming out of the vents and the kegs. You see that those flames shooting out from each direction. So it tells me that we've got just a little bit more 
um, with gas to burn off there. So I'm going to go ahead and throw just a little bit more wood in here just to make sure that we maintain our heat here for just a little bit longer while the last of that wood gas is burned off. So I'm guessing we'll probably need about, I don't know, maybe 15 or 20 more minutes and these should be about wrapped up. All right, guys, the fire's cooled down now. We're only at about, I think, 250 degrees. Fire's completely out, so I'm going to go ahead and open this up, show you guys what it looks like. So the first step I've got to do here is push my one kit all the way to the back to get it out of the way so that I can get this one to, uh, to pull out of here. Now we're going to let these cool off do here for just a second um, and then we will flip these top the top open and we'll throw a little snow in there to quench these all right guys so the first thing we've got to do here uh, now to quench this biochar is go ahead and pull this clip off so we've got our clip out now we can go ahead and pop that pin out of the way flip this guy open So we've got our biochar in here. We're going to take just a little bit of snow and uh, quench that biochar. So what I like to do, drop it in there and just kind of shake it around a little bit, kind of mix it. All right, guys. So now we've opened up the kegs. We've quenched the biochar um, with a little bit of uh, snow. And now we're going to go ahead and see, uh, see what we made. So we just weighed somewhere around three or four gallons of biochar. And as you can see, everything's nice and evenly cooked, quenched, and ready to go. But that's how easy it is to make biochar with the Boulder Biochar Barrel.